a scion of many worlds. It takes only a moment of pulling hard to kill the woman. He puts aside just how good that tasted and just how satisfying the meal was. That's one for the therapist, likely alongside what was probably a hallucination earlier. Once again, he has too many questions and too little information. The corpse drops to the ground and he pulls in his proboscis as he turns and begins to look through the area. Something strange with this place. The whole city is on the water, but here, the humidity levels are through the roof. The sound of slopping water greets him as he slowly pockets the cannon and creeps along. The area is big, likely due to some connection to the larger Yorgwa, so thankfully, he has room to maneuver. Although why they would have so tiny a staircase when there are larger people down here is something else to consider. Then he comes to a chamber that leads down directly into water without any other entrance or exit. A smuggling tunnel, of course. He covers himself in axiom and then dismisses it before covering his antenna and the expanded pouch on his belt that has both his map and the cannon. Water on any of those three would be a very bad thing. He dives into the dark water and almost instantly catches himself against the floor. Pouch or not, he's a big one with a lot of weight to him. There is a tunnel up ahead and he pulls himself along the dark corridor. There's a shifting to the water and there's a slight... He alters the axiom around his antenna as he drifts forward through the water and suddenly it simply opens up. His eyes widen as he realizes that it's a damn honeycomb of tunnels that reach under numerous buildings, worming around the foundations and popping up in numerous locations. He surfaces into the air and adjusts the axiom around his antenna again. It fails to cut through the interference. His eyes narrow a bit as he tries to place exactly how he did that. The process is extremely complicated to readjust an electromagnetic sensitive organ to properly take in input from water as opposed to air. But the formula is in his head along with an answer, one that worked perfectly. It was even adjusted for the fact it was salt water. God damn it, things are fucky, Jasper concludes as he quickly searches the area. Nothing here. He needs to find some kind of sign or smuggler's marker. He slips back into the water and then grins to himself as he feels something swim through it. He quickly pushes through the water after it and whoever it is swims off far faster than he can follow. He surfaces for more air and there's a gasp. Looks like he got lucky. There's a single midwife here, chained to the wall. Who are you? The Earthani are... Wait, you're that odd one. The one from the stars, she says with awe in her voice. I am Jasper. I've been sent to help, he says, and she nods as he reaches over and slowly uses his claws to cut through the manacle around her wrist. Have you seen others here? Yes, I've heard screams she says, and he curses. They want the secrets of procreation. But the way they're asking, I don't think they're from Bright Dawn. Really? Damn, so this is a smokescreen. No, there are two groups. That's what I mean. One group is using the actions of another to disguise their own actions. Someone wants the midwives. Someone else has another target, he says. All right, now don't fight this. Just let it happen. Don't fight what? She asks as he pulls out the confiscated laser and hands it to her. I'm teleporting you to the temple in the main hub of the city. It's secure for the most part. They'll tell you how to use that weapon. Let them know I'm still looking for the rest. He tells her before putting his hands on her shoulders. He's very careful, very, very careful to slide the odds and then she's gone. There's a slight sense of the temple from his antenna and he nods. It worked perfectly. Then something jumps onto his back and he slams it into the wall. It's a Nagasha, and she starts wrapping around him and burning with heat before pulling him into the water. The heat ramps up and the water boils as he tries to get a grip on the slithery assassin. Knuckles wrapped in metal slam into his face as she starts to beat him around the head. He feels a tooth loosen before he can really start applying torque with his wings to force her off somewhat and he manages to grab onto the wall and heave up. 
They break out of the water and he can now hear it properly boil around her as she tries to cook him alive with her self-heating abilities. He slams them both into the wall and she only grunts. Two more slams and she goes limp and starts sliding off. But she's a fighter and has her focus back in just a few seconds. Unfortunately for her, he has enough time to plant a solid stance and grab her around the face. She tries to struggle but finds herself against the blades as his antenna lay against her forehead. Good morning, sunshine. I have some questions. And if I don't want to answer them, she snarls at him. Oh, I'm getting the answers. How unpleasant it is for you is what you have control of, he says softly. Lives of good people are at stake and you have made yourself the enemy to me and them. Good people? Good people? The midwives enslave all of Lacron. They issue commands over the people that never asked for it with future generations held hostage. Every daughter I have is a hostage to those lunatics, and every daughter they have as well. They interfere where they are unwelcome and force their ways upon us if we are to exist at all. And what have they asked of you that is so horrible that you feel as if all children you have and will ever have are being held hostage? He asks after a moment. He wasn't quite expecting this. He should have, but he hadn't. They interfere with our entire nation from the seafloor up. Yes, okay, but how? What are they making you do that you wouldn't already do? Jasper asks. They manipulate us from the cradle to the grave. They're the ones that put you in the cradle to begin with, but putting that aside, what is it that they actually make you do? Jasper asks. They stop us from living to our greatest potential. And what potential is that? How do you not know this? Just answer the question. They keep us from our destiny. And where are you keeping them? Two junctions down. That's where the Intero wait. Thank you, he says with a bloody smile. Also, perhaps you can explain to the nice ladies that you're fighting against why you're fighting against them. What? No, no, I won't let you do this, she says as he starts to teleport her. If you fight this, you'll just be cut in half. Is that really what you want? He asks her, and she deliberately disrupts the teleportation hard. He's left with a bloody smear and a torsoless tail that starts to slip into the water. He grabs it and makes sure it's all out of the water. This is going to scare the hell out of whoever's house is above him, but that's the least of his problems. Hmm, they'll have something interesting to tell me when I get back he notes as he slinks back into the water. Two junctions down, he adjusts his antenna again and notices that there's movement in the water. Two junctions down. He moves forward, still not so much swimming as just grabbing the sides of the tunnels and pulling himself forward. There's something, something wrong as he can sense through the water, but there's still fair amount he can't make sense of. He slides through the water easily, heading upwards to get some more air. Something grabs at his leg, but he's an Earthani. He has knives there already. Whatever grabbed him is easily sliced into with a roll of his foot as he embeds his claws into the stone landing above and hauls himself upwards to come face to muzzle with a laser cannon. Who are you? The man who's gonna make you eat that weapon if you don't get it out of my face, he retorts as Whatever's trying to savage him from below comes back for another round. He's distracted, he's annoyed, and he's in danger. So his answer is simple. Slice at whatever's come back for round two, teleport behind the laser wielder. Duck down as she apparently has friends he didn't see, and in the dim, the telltale light-up effect is really obvious. Boot the woman into the water while grabbing the laser cannon. Turn around and fail to fire as his eartheny claws are too thick for the trigger guard. But roll with it anyways as the woman with the other laser does not know about his current inability to fire. Or at least doesn't figure it out until he adjusts his claws to be able to fire it with the tip of the jagged spear he has instead of an index and middle finger. It's a shit grip on the weapon though. Are you an ally of the midwives? She demands and he nods. He then promptly slides to the side to dodge the laser blast. 
The humidity makes these weapons extremely close range down here, but he's in extremely close ranges. It charges again, and he jolts both closer and the opposite direction to dodge another blast. It then fails to light up a third time as the Jorgwa with the laser starts to panic and he looms over her. He takes the weapon out of her grip and stuffs it into his pouch, adding Axiom to give it more room. Now, I have some questions I hope you have answers, he states as he puts a hand on her head, then turns and points the laser cannon right at the thing sneaking up to him. Another Jorgwa, this one with badly hurt hands. Uh, where are the midwives? Jasper asks. What? The girl in his hand tries and he starts to squeeze. I'm not an idiot. He says simply before relenting somewhat on his grip. He doesn't look away from the girl that slunk out of the water and squeezes the trigger ever so slightly. The weapon starts to warm up and visibly glow. They're upstairs! The waterlogged Yorgwa yelps. Era, she's going to kill us! If you show me where you're keeping the midwives hostage, I promise to spare you both, Jasper states. What good is the word of an Earthani? You whole race is too timid to have any kind of moral strength. Interesting. I suppose that would make me too timid to rip your hand open or hold you at laser point as well then. He counters and she, visible, reconsiders. What are you? Earthani, he says before chuckling. Although to be fair... I'm the most interesting Orthani you're likely to meet. Now, the midwives? They lead him up to a thankfully wide and open doorway and show him inside. He goes in last with his cannon trained on them. They understand the danger of the weapon. And while his nature as an Orthani might make them underestimate him, such a thing is not what he needs to intimidate someone. The, the Holy Star sent? Really? They sent you to help us. Jasper is immediately asked the moment he steps into the torture room. And it is a torture room. Four women chained to the walls, another on a table with a water aerumenta holding a burning brand giving him a serious deer in the headlights look. Afternoon, miss. Your scheduled daring rescue has arrived. Jasper jokes as he slowly lines up a shot from the cannon to the interrogator. The problem is, that right behind her is one of the hostages. If he pulls the trigger, the poor girl is dead. He needs to get clever. Or rather, he did need to get clever as the idiot interrogator throws the brand right at him, effectively disarming herself and then demoralizing herself as it just clangs off his breastplate. Care to try again? Jasper asks after a moment. What? Your pathetic, clearly doomed attempt at self-defense. Care to try again? Why are you here? To rescue the midwives and quell the riots. Although, if you care to tell me where these weapons come from... He begins and she flinches. Oh, you do know. Excellent. That means you get to play interrogator from the other side. Speaking of, could you untie me? The midwife on the table asks and the interrogator smirks as she draws a handful of water out of the air and solidifying it into a knife. He can't. If he attacks me, then my companions can gut him, armor or no. He attacks them and I kill you. We're at a... Jasper cuts off the speech by adjusting his aim and shooting off her arm. The beam carries through and shreds the chains one of the midwives is dangling from and drops the poor woman to the floor. There's a duo of clangs and he uses the cannon to club both women who had instantly turned to try and knife him through the breastplate in the heads. They crumple like paper. I know that a lot of axiom is being tossed around, but surely they could have sensed that my armor is reinforced. He mutters even as the interrogator screams as her mind catches up to her very literal disarming. 